Welcome everyone. I'm delighted, particularly delighted today uh, to be gathering around the round table, the virtual round table for the six now VAR response round table. Um, I'm Christina Rebel. I'm co-founder of Wikifactory. Uh, VAR response has been developed by Wikifactory to bring communities together in response to COVID-19 and to help create a more resilient world beyond. So these regular roundtables are meant to bring communities together directly to share their insights and share our learnings from diverse perspectives. Like I said, this is session number six. We started them at the start of May, where we had projects ranging from PPE to medical supplies, built environment solutions, a, a range of, of projects present to a panel that of experts. And in that session, uh, it really brought to light a set of key questions that uh, urged us to continue having roundtables and go deeper into. Uh, so after that inaugural session, we've had sessions uh, discussing, well, what are the funding opportunities and what are the business models or uh, actually how to build open hardware communities as a question itself, uh, not least to something that apparently sounded more boring, uh, like, uh, you know, how to secure accreditation of your COVID supplies, but actually ended up being super engaging with last week being a session about actually distributed, manu distributed manufacturing of, of, of supplies themselves. So from one of these round tables, uh, Sandra from the Caribals and uh, Global Innovation Gathering Initiative reached out and said, look, we're, we're doing a fantastic summit at the end of June, uh, gathering the Caribals and the Global Innovation Gathering communities. And, you know, I think it would be really nice for you to co-host of our response roundtable with us. You know, we have a win wonderful co-chair uh, to suggest uh, that you'll meet in, in a few moments. And I said, you know, uh, this is fantastic because it just automatically clicked in my mind that the Wikifactory community, the VAR response community with Caribals, with Global Innovation Gathering, it would guarantee a very international panel of, 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 of people to come together in a, in a round table. And when we posed that, it seemed to me that we had the opportunity together to answer a very important question to today's conditions uh, surrounding COVID worldwide. And that is basically how to coordinate humanitarian COVID-19 response together as a global community, as a global team, basically. So I'm just so thrilled because we are so represented uh, by the world. I think we have an initiative from every continent apart from Australia um, and New Zealand because New Zealand is now into its own continent. Um, I found that out yesterday. But uh, we now have here, uh, we have Nawaz Nasser from Science Camp in Iraq. We have Gabriela Agustini from Protege Brazil in Brazil. Uh, Nadine Moe from Emboa Lab in Cameroon, Palav Shrefa uh, and Bahar Kumar from Nepal Communitaire in Nepal, and of course also Gaurav Manchanda from Formlands in the U.S. And just to say, I'm I'm in Europe. Uh, the format of the session, just to go through it very briefly for everyone, is that each panelist will be given a 10-minute uh, slot to give a presentation to the question. And uh, following the presentations, we'll have a Q&A discussion, and we'll be also launching polls to make the session even more interactive amongst us all here. Good friend, Norris. Uh, Norris has been a long time um, um, enthusiast of open technology and really important in the ecosystem of uh, creating and uh, democratizing technology in Iraq and also other parts of the world. Um, he is the founder of Science Camp, which is a maker space also, and he has been also involved in COVID responses. Um, you can even find the video of his, um, they're creating more than 500 masks a day. Uh, right, Nar? So I would uh, really love to know more about uh, your stories, please. Thank you very much for your introduction. Yes, we based in Iraq and respond to 
global crisis of this COVID-19 as a makers, as other makers worldwide. Uh, we, we start to think about a solution for this situation, especially uh, science camp is part of my house or vice versa. So technically I live in science camp all this month. So uh, we have some how good infrastructure of machines and tools and ability to design a solution all the time. As a makers, we always uh, solution providers. So this time we look at this uh, crisis like an opportunity to, uh, to reduce a solution worldwide. Uh, we start to make face shield because it was possible to work with this product because we believe that uh, the PPE is the most important part of uh, countering this crisis because till now there is no vaccine or treatment. So we only have protection. Uh, protection and staying at home is maybe good for short time, but for long time, for economic reason, it's something not possible to control. So we cannot control the outside, but we can control our uh, personal spaces. So we find the face shield is the perfect project we need to work because it's cover all the face. So it's going to cover the nose, mouth, and eyes, especially the eyes, which is not covered by the mask. So we start to work with the local communities, local organizations, local uh, manufacturers, and all the people who are related to the uh, ecosystem in Basra, the city where we are in, here in Iraq, south of Iraq, Basra. Uh, we start to make face shield, but this time we didn't depend on uh, any type of local production or uh, low production uh, method. So we try to develop a design should be functional, useful, and can be replicable and scalable. So we can make a lot of from this product easily in short time, and also we need to share it with the others. So we start with the laser cutter technology and design the face shield, which uh, make us, this design make us uh, able to produce uh, 500 uh, masks per day. Uh, in general, we uh, about more than 10,000 masks were provided in uh, several cities in Iraq, not only Basra, for the medical staff. Uh, there is a lot of details related to the manufacturing process, but what I want to talk here today is the, the replicability and scalability of the product. Uh, maker movement is different from the big companies in manufacturing in very critical and important point. Uh, those companies, when they build a project or a design, they try to make it unique for them for many uh, business related uh, reasons. So they make it something and uh, not like uh, open source. They make it somehow difficult to replicate to keep their position in market. And this is very rational. For us as a makers, the maker movement soul and uh, values are something different. Always we are about sharing, about open sourcing ideas and share ideas. So what we do, we try to not only design a solution that can provide the functionality of a protection, but also we want it simple, easy to build, replicable, and can be built under any circumstances anywhere. I have a very strange uh, example. We always study this type of design, the simple and robust, and it's good, like the AK-47. It's wide, <laughs> widely distributed in the earth and it is type of how human can think about good design in spite of the reason or the purpose of the design. So we want our mask to be like the AK-47 of the mask or PPEs. So we make it uh, made by one single step of laser cutting. We make it uh, uh, made from two parts only or two materials, which is the uh, PET clear uh, films used 
to uh, it's wi widely uh, distributed everywhere and you can find it. Uh, for our case, we find it with from the factories of uh, water bottles and water glasses, the plastic one, and also the fabricated uh, rubber, that one with the elastic, elastics, which is very available everywhere and you can find it everywhere. This type of choosing material and also the design, I can share it with you. I have a photo. I try to share the screen. This one. Yes. You can see it. This is the brochure of the project. As you can see, it is very simple, uh, easy to replicate. And also we look in the design to not only use a laser cutter you can make it by router cnc or you can even make it by any sharp object or scissors so it is very replicable you can make it everywhere and you can find the materials so this is let's say my answer about how to make our efforts collaborated together by not sharing the material but sharing the ideas Thank you. Thank you so much, Norris. This is so important. Uh, we strongly believe uh, that ideas should be out there, right? Uh, so that we can collaborate. Norris, when, what, why, what, how have you optimized uh, the design that you initially worked on? Yes, uh, for, for our situation, it's the first choice designed by our team from scratch because we as a maker space as a makers always we try to understand and absorb the issue the problem and to provide the solution for it so always we depend on the design thinking uh, approach to uh, produce solutions always we try to provide custom design and tailor design solution for customers or for the need. For that reason, we always, or in general, with the uh, first option, but of course, we are very open for ideas, for sharing, because we didn't uh, just pop up in the world. Always we are learning from the other makers, from the other cultures. So we try to interact and get the best for the solution as a, as a as in every case will depend for what is the best way. So always, even in this crisis, always we make the uh, priority for providing, we didn't work only for the fish tip. We work with many, many other things related to fit the needs for the medical staff and equipment and everything related to the response. But for ourselves, as we were to reach to the best service, best quality, best solution, we put a priority to buy solutions if it is possible, rather than reinventing the wheel from, the, from scratch. But in some circumstances, inventing a tailored design solution may be the best. And this is what happened with the face mask, but not with the other things related to the uh, ventilator machines. We 3D print parts rather than re-consuming the team, the time, the resources for rebuilding the device uh, while we have ability or the authority have ability to reach to supplier for these machines. Because we put the priority to the human lives rather than uh, catching with our ideas which is very, very precious and very, uh, I think what is the, the uh, English word? It's something sweet to do yourself something, but uh, the value of providing the, the solution may make uh, the decision about using our own ideas or collaborate with the others or just make a copy of a perfect solution from other friends about our organization, Science Camp, what we need. Maybe our situation somehow unique and different from the other countries uh, because we have some serious issues related to the government and 
management the country in the right way. So for that reason, yes, we need legal support, we need financial support. But in the first place, we were needing, uh, let's say, a type of marketing or how to make our services and products available for the medical staff. Unfortunately, uh, nobody from the government side or health authority contact us or provide at least something similar to what we did. The medical staff in Iraq not well equipped and we pro produce about more than 10,000 face shield like a voluntary work producing it and providing it freely for the medical staff. But if we were getting a support in this part in more systemic and better organized way, we can increase our productivity into at least 3,000 uh, face masks per day. So we are talking about 1,000 and 1,000 and even continuous production. And we will not only solving the healthcare issue, but we also will uh, solve part of the job creation or job maintenance, which is related to the economical issue of this uh, COVID-19 crisis. For that reason, we were need the, and still need this type of marketing to make it possible and free for doctors because we don't want to sell it for medical staff. And the first place we think about the government, and then we think about the international organization who take care about the humanitarian health uh, fields. But unfortunately, we didn't get anything uh, from that. There was a talks with the local IOM, but for no reason they didn't uh, collaborate. So for us, yes, we need financial and legal support and legal i mean it by it uh, make uh, like something like ce in europe and uh, fda approved in the us so we need something also uh, functional here in iraq uh, and also for everywhere because we always think about sharing the uh, the concept of the idea or the products we work on but in the first time or first uh, position uh, for Iraq, we need something I can put in the promotion and communication support or modify this field or adding something related to the marketing. I talking about this uh, uh, point with sadness because it is not something we need to ask the authority or health authority in the country to work on this part. They need to ask and look for people like us who do this type of activities. Thanks.